Hey there, Sam. The test folder in our Laravel project contains everything about testing. Laravel uses PHP unit as its main testing library out of the box. The first thing that we want to look at is the PHP unit XML file. This is where we set out the configuration for our PHP unit test. Now, if you haven't worked with PHP unit before, this file might look a little bit scary to you. Let's quickly go through the key points here. First of all, we see the test suite group here. A test suite means that a group of tests are supposed to run together. So here we can see that Laravel is grouping the unit test in the unit directory as a test suite, and also all the feature tests. The suffix attribute is telling PHP unit that we only want to scan files that ends with test.php. Other files will not be included in the test suite. Coverage is the code coverage configuration. And by setting up this configuration, we can tell PHP unit to generate a nice code coverage report for us. The server elements here are the environmental variables that we would pass to the testing environment. By default, Laravel uses the default database connection as defined in a database configuration file, which in our case will be our MySQL database connection. You are free to set up your own database connection by uncommenting these two lines out and supply your own value. Okay, now, once we configure the PHP unit XML file, the next thing I want to talk about is the structure of the test folder. You'll notice that there are already two files created in it, the create application file and the test case file. In a nutshell, the test case file is an abstract class that set up our test. The test case class is meant to be extended by every single test in our app. The test case class bootstrap and provides us a lot of helper functions for us to write our test code. Now you'll notice that the test case class is using a create application trait. Let's look at what's inside it. It is a simple trait that contains exactly one method that returns an app instance. This is a very important function because it provides us a mock app instance to the testing environment, and it is used internally by the base test case class. You are free to modify this trait if you want to provide more features to the app instance or customize how the app instance was instantiated. Anyway, let's see how we can create our first test in Laravel. The easiest way to get started is to use the PHP Addison command. We'll go to our terminal and type in PHP Addison make test and supply the help flag to read the documentation. And in here, we notice that if we pass an additional unit flag to it, we'll create a unit test. By default, if we use the command as it is, Laravel will create a feature test. Let's try it out. I want to test our post repository functions. So I'll type out PHP Addison, make test, double dash unit, and the name of the test will be post repository test. And now if we go back to our folder, you'll notice that Laravel has created a new file in the unit directory. And if you look inside it, it is a simple class with one method in it, which is a test example on how we can write our unit test. All right, let's start writing our test for the post repository. When writing a test, it is important for us to be aware of what we're testing. In our post repository, we have three methods, the create method, update method, and delete method. So we're gonna write a test for each of them. As a convention, we use snake case to name the method for our test functions, and we always prefix them with the word test. That way, PHP unit can automatically recognize the test function and execute the test later on. So I'll create three methods in our test class, test create, test update, and test delete. And now, here's the question. How do we get started on writing tests? Here are the general steps that I usually take when writing a test. The first step is to define our goal. In other words, what's the purpose of this function? And what do we want to test? In our case here, we want to make sure that a post can be created by using the create method in a post repository. The second step is to replicate the environment or apply any restriction if available. What this means is to recreate the condition on where we would code the correct method in our post repository. In our example here, there's not much to do to replicate the environment or apply restrictions actually, but if we look at some other cases, for example, an e-commerce app, like testing the shopping cart, the environment will be much more complicated to replicate. To test the checkout function in an e-commerce app, we first need to log in a user and get a user to add a bunch of items to their shopping cart. And that's exactly what I meant by replicating the environment. The third step is to define a source of truth. The source of truth is another word for the result expected. So here, if we're going to create a post, we will expect a post created in a database to have a title and body to be exactly the same as what we have passed on to the correct method of our post repository. Once we have defined a source of truth, we'll compare the result. And comparing the result means to run a function that we're testing 
and compare the result return against the source of truth. Okay, let's get started on writing the test code for our post repository. So step one, our goal is to test if the correct method in our post repository will indeed correct the record in the database. For step two, the only requirement for the environment is to have access to an instance of the repository. So I'll go ahead and create an instance of the repository from the service container. To do that, we'll need to have access to an app instance. And by default, unit test is the standing, the test case class provided by PHP unit. It is not using the base test case class provided by Laravel. So we're losing out on a lot of goodies. So let's refactor our code to extend our test class from the test case provided by Laravel. The reason why Laravel has opt-in to use the test case provided by PHP unit is because unit testing is meant to be lightweight. The test case class provided by Laravel is an enhanced version of the PHP unit test case and therefore much heavier than the original. However, don't let this rule restrict you from doing what you're doing. The more important point here is to write our test properly. So once we loaded the test case provided by Laravel, we have access to the app instance from the this keyword. So to create an instance of the post repository, all we need to do is to call the make function from it. For the source of truth, I'll define a payload for the post that we're going to create. And now everything is ready, and we'll call the correct method from our repository and compare the results. Now the result variable should be an instance of the created post model. We need to make sure it has exactly the same title as our payload. To do that, we can call one of the assert methods. The one we're looking for is called assert same, which will compare two values using the triple equal sign. The first argument is what is expected, which in our case here will be the title property in our payload array. And the second argument is what we actually get, which will be the title attribute that we read from the created model. The third argument optionally accepts an error message that will get PHP unit to display for us in case this assertion has failed. It's a good idea to always include this message as it provides more context on why did the assertion fail. Okay, now let's try to run our test. We need to run a PHP unit binary, which is located inside a vendor folder and a bean folder. We'll hit enter and our tests are executed successfully. We get two risky tests because we haven't implemented the test update and test delete methods. I'll show it to you how would it look like if our test has failed. So I'll go back to our test correct method and change the expected argument to something else. We'll run PHP unit again. And this time we see an error with our custom error message. As you can see here, the custom error message really helps out on telling us why did our test fail. By providing a context, if we put down a very descriptive error message, it can really help us to debug our code. All right, back to our test class. Let's continue to write a test for the update method and the delete method. Again, we're going to follow the four step process. First thing first, define a goal. For the update method, we want to make sure that we can update the post using the update method. Step two, replicate the environment. In this case, we want an instance of repository and also having an existing post in our database. So I'll use the post factory to create a dummy post. The third step is to define a source of truth in which I'll create a payload to update our dummy post. I'll change the title to ABC123. Step four, we'll execute our code and compare the result. So I'll call the update method on our post repository. And the assert same method again to compare the payload title against the updated post title. Let's run our test once again. Whoops, we get an error. And it seems like the error is because our post factory is returning a collection rather than a model instance. To resolve this, I'll simply grab the first element from the result of the create method and run PHP unit again. And bam, this time our test is passing. Great. Lastly, let's finish off our delete test method before we end the lesson. Again, the same thing here. We'll define a goal, which is to test the delete method in our repository and see if it is working. For the environment, we need an instance of our repository and also a dummy record in our database. Again, we'll use the factory function to create a record. We don't have any source of truth, so we can just skip to step four, which is to compare the result. I'll call the force delete method on our repository. 
and we'll verify if our record is indeed deleted by finding the record in our database. We shouldn't find any record at this point, so the expected result is now. Let's run PHP unit. Whoops, I made a mistake. The result returned by our repository is a boolean and we shouldn't read the ID property from it. So I'll just change it to dummy instead. Let's try again. And we see all of our tests passed. Beautiful. We still need to write tests for our user repository and comment repository. I'll leave that as an exercise for you. Again, I'll share my solution in the project Git repository. So feel free to check it out if you're stuck. Now, I do want to talk about one last thing before we end the lesson. The tests that we have written so far are considered as tests on the happy path. What I mean by that is these tests only test for the behavior when we use this function correctly. You see, everything can go wrong in a live production environment. For example, there might be a situation where the user will try to delete a post that has already been deleted. If that's the case, how do we handle that scenario? Will there be an exception? Will that exception be handled correctly? Would it break our code? To answer these questions, it is very important for us to also test these abnormal behaviors, which is also known as a set path in testing. Typically, we will have more set path than happy path. The more set path that you can capture, the less likely that your code will break in production. However, it's important to note that it's impossible to handle 100% of the edge cases. The important thing is to find a good balance between finding the edge cases and the likelihood of these events from happening. Okay, let's quickly write a set path when we try to delete a post that doesn't exist in the database. I'll create a new test function, which will test if an exception will be thrown when we try to delete a post that does not exist. The environment will be similar to our happy path test delete, so I'll just copy and paste from there and change factory create to factory make because we don't want the record to exist inside our database. And now, if we try to delete our dummy record, we will expect an error because based on what is written in our post repository, when a repository failed to delete a model, it will throw a general JSON exception. And to handle this behavior, Back in our test function, we should call the expect exception helper method to tell PHP unit that there should be an exception. And now let's run PHP unit again, and we get green. Beautiful. And that is pretty much it. Try and see how many edge cases that you can come up with and write a test for each of them. We'll continue and talk more about testing in the next video. I'll see you there. Key takeaway for this lesson, Laravel uses PHP unit as its official testing library. Laravel provides a test case class, which is basically an enhanced version of the test case provided by PHP unit. Laravel's test case loads a lot of helper methods for us to use in a Laravel app. We should write tests on both happy path and set path for our functions. That's it for this lesson, and I'll see you again in the next video. If you enjoyed the content of this video, don't forget to hit the like, subscribe, and the bell icon for more content to come. It will really help me out. Thanks for your support.